Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X. So in the last episode we had uh, proven our fighter bombers as worthy and we are now in the process of um, exploiting the system of cans. So we've already done the exploration. Uh, although we still have a bit more of that to do. We've definitely done the extermination, although, we once again, we still have a little bit more to do. Now it's time for the uh, exploitation. Ah, it looks like we've found a second sensor contact. Ah, looks like there was just a, an outpost there. Um, so that uh, thermal signature 5 means it's going to be a... Uh, observation outpost. So, uh, how are we doing? We are waiting for jump gates to open up. So that would be Collins. How far are you? 109 days? Seems a little short. Ah, oh, because it, it doesn't actually factor in the construction time, I believe. Or something. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, let's make sure that we are ready for them. So we need... We already have a survey ships on the way. Uh, our salvage fleet doesn't have any jump systems and it's too large to jump uh, using the tenders that we have. So we'll leave them alone for the moment. Um, counties are tug That can stay... Perry, that's a... Which one's the Perry? Oh, that's a terraformer. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have a, a troop transport, actually. Jump scout, tug, fighter bomber, freighter, missile base, command carrier, missile destroyer, destroyer school. Terraformer, destroyer, exploration ship, construction ship, jump tender. Oh, the jump tender. We have too many jump tenders. Aronta is obsolete. Goodbye. Uh, Collins. Okay. We will design a troop transport then. So, first things first, we need a... Troop transport bay. Where is it? Here it is, troop transport bay. So one troop transport bay can hold one battalion. A small one can hold uh, one uh, company, I believe. Yes. No. Point two battalions. Yeah, I think that's a that's a company. Um. Combat drop modules, of course, um, you, you don't necessarily want to transport uh, people around in combat drop modules because um, the cryo ones are okay, right? You can transport a cryo one, one around, um, and they're actually they're actually cheaper in terms of mass, but they are definitely more expensive in terms of uh, tonnage, and very importantly, combat drop modules are military components. So combat drop modules, so these ones are standard ones, um, your troops will rack up morale. Do not use these for transporting around, they are only really to be used for the final invasion um, or for boarding actions. The cryo ones, yes, you can pull it off, but there's really no reason to, uh, because the cryo, which means that the, the troops loaded in them will not rack up, um, will not rack up deployment. But they're more expensive, and even though they're mass, uh, they save you in mass. Um, they do count as military, which means they need to be maintained. Which means not only are they more expensive, they will continue to rack up costs. Um, so, troop transport bays it is. So, we're going to go for four battalions plus their HQ. And that will be pretty sufficient for one troop. Um, you don't necessarily want to pile on 
uh, all the troops into the one transport because uh, if the, if it gets shot down, you're losing five battalions. If this one gets shot down, you lose five battalions. If a bigger one gets shot down, you're losing all of those battalions instead. So keeping them a little bit separate is definitely beneficial. Um, so next we need fuel. So we shall go for any leaders, 200 billion. That's fine. And the plummet time will go for six months because why not? Um, you know, ultimately it doesn't really matter. Uh, armor. We'll go for three layers because that'll round it up, almost round it to 20, 20 kilotons. And that will be that. So, troop transport. There we go. Done. Um, these guys don't rely on morale, so conscript will be fine. Yes. So, what options do we have for it? So, what we could do, we, we, now, we, we would have to build a new shipyard for it, right? Option one, build a new shipyard. We don't have a spare shipyard. Uh, Birmingham is our tanker. You know what, though? <clears throat> yeah, Birmingham is a tanker. Okay, so that's one option. Um, we've got the tug. We've got the... Hmm... We could get rid of the columns. I mean, we're not really going to build any more of these guys. We don't really need to. You know what? I'm going to build in a second columns as a spare. And then I'm going to set this thing to retool to a troop transport. Because we're going to be building a lot more troop transport than we're going to be building jump gate constructions, right? <clears throat> there. And hopefully, well, they're probably not. Um, when will we finish? 60, February 64, August 63. Yeah, that one's going to take a lot longer. But that's fine. That will do. we got our freighter here. The alternative option that we have, right, the alternative option is to make our troop transport equivalent to our Sydney-class freighter. <clears throat> right? So, how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to get the refit cost close enough that one can be built from a shipyard tool to the other, right? So from the Sydney to the Bandicoot costs 5,000 build points. Okay, that's a lot. How does it cost 5,000 build points? Okay, well, let's let's compare them then, shall we? So, for the Sydney, we have one cargo hold four engines, two large fuel, three cargo handler, handlings, six crew quarters, one engineering space, one bridge, three small crew quarters, and one tiny crew quarters. Okay. And for our proposed Bandicoot, we have two engines. We have five troop transport bays, 
these don't have an equivalent, so I'll put them down here. Four fuel, large fuel storage. Four regular crew quarters. One engineering space. And one bridge. Okay. So, what we can do to equalize them is we can basically bring both the tonnage and the components more in line, right? So what do we need to do to bring the Bandicoot in line with Sydney? Well, we could stick four engines on it. So oh, I've accidentally started tooling it. Okay. Okay, so we could stick four engines on it. <clears throat> so there we go. All right, so that brings us in line there. And if we go have a look at the refit from the Sydney, so it's already dropped to 1600, right? So <clears throat> this brings the refit cost down while adding components also increase the build points. So what you want is you want the refit cost, I believe, to be within 20% or to be less than 20% of the build points. Um, but I can't remember whether it's off the ship that you're retooling or not. So Sydney is 825. Uh, Bandicoot's probably going to be higher. So we might need to do it the other way around. So tool for Bandicoot. Uh, and just build Sydney's off that. So, what else can we do? Well, we can reduce the two large fuels. And that only gives us 82.9 billion kilometers, so we might have to keep those in. But we'll keep those for now. Um, how are our crew quarters doing? So, we have six crew quarters now. Excellent. Engineering space and bridge. Okay, how is the refit cost? 1600 and Sydney, no, it's not going to let us build it yet. We need to bring it down further. What can we do there? Well, we can put cargo holds uh, We can also put the crew quarters, so it's three small and one tiny Three small and one tiny. And I've checked keep excess Q. Um, this should bring it down a little bit more, but not by much. So how much build points is a cargo bay? Standard cargo bay is 50 cost. 50 build points. That's not that expensive. So what's the difference? Cargo handling. Cargo handling system. That one's 10, so we'll put three of these because we need to anyway. 1657.5. What's the tonnage difference? I believe there's a pretty serious tonnage difference because of the cargo bay. So, cargo handlings. Yep, we've got three of those. <clears throat> we've got this. We've got this. <clears throat> I need to adjust it, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what happens if we do put that cargo hold? How does it, how does it go now? Now it's 1900. So it's actually made it worse because the tonnage is so much higher. What would be really great is if we could get the refit cost breakdown that we do when you want to refit a ship. Uh, that would be absolutely f fantastic to have, and it would make this so much easier to figure out um, the exact cost. You know, um, to figure out what you need to what you what you need to actually change to try and bring them into line. So, <clears throat> because 
we just don't have this and the cost is going to be too great. We, there is another option. We'll go ahead and rename name this to TTFT tooling. And what we're going to do is we are going to have as many identical components between the two ships as we can. So that's the four engines, the cargo bay, Three cargo hold systems, the troop transport bays, the fuel storage, yeah, okay. no, we'll keep it for two for now. Okay. And let's see <clears throat> how far off is Bandicoot. 25 out of 1,000 and 1,500. So it's still not quite sufficient. Because the tooling costs are just going to be a little bit too different. I don't know. I'll have a poke around and see if I can figure it out. One sec. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it took a little bit of work. But I finally managed to get them constructing from it one over. Um, I did have to redesign the Sydney. Uh, so we are now up to Sydney 4, I believe. No, 3 or 4. Which version of Sydney are we up to? 4. Okay. There we go. Um, so... Having it, having it at its original size um, was just not working, just not practical, uh, because the cost of each component, they need to be changed. So the cargo hold and the, the cargo bay and the troop transport components were just too expensive, um, and they were jacking up the refit cost. Hmm. Um, so what I ended up doing was, so I added an extra cargo hold to the Sydney, and I upgraded its range and speed and stuff like that. Um, but for the um, for the Bandicoot, um, I added uh, 25,000 tons worth of uh, troop capacity, so I doubled it. But I also added a cargo hold. So that cargo hold um, gives it similar tonnage while not increasing the refit cost because it's just a cargo hold. Um, that also means that our troop transports can actually act as freighters in the meantime. Um, so just very inefficient uh, little small freighters. So they can come in handy. Uh, it's also very handy because you can come in and drop your troops. And then after they're done with the invasion, you can use the troop transports to ship infrastructure and whatever um, off world. So it is handy to have a little cargo hold there. Um, also increase the cargo handling and stuff like that. So overall, um, a decent ship. So we will go ahead with the retool of the shipyard because um, I got it the other way around. So the, a ship tool for the Bandicoot can build the Sydney, uh, not the other way around. So if we go to the Sydney, right, go to the obsolete. If we go to the Sydney, so it's 1,300 build points with a refit cost of... 82.5 um, which is apparently less more than 20 percent uh, 13.62 divided by 82.5 16 huh Strange, I would think that... Oh, from. Yeah, so from the Bandicoot to the Sydney is 82.5, right? And that's under 20%, so we can do it that way. But if we go to the Bandicoot... And we go to Sydney, it's 556, which is way more than 20% of the refit cost. So we can't refit... Uh, to the Bandicoot from the Sydney, but we can do it the other way around. Um, presumably, that's because with the cargo hold, right? From the Bandicoot to the Sydney, we strip out the transport, the troop bays, 
and then we add in a single cargo hold, which is like 40 build points, right? Whereas we're from the Sydney to the Bandicoot, we strip out a single cargo hold, but we add 10 troop transport base and the troop transport base are way more expensive than the cargo holds so that is why it only works one way um from the bandic from bandicoot to sydney um we can retool that way um so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um that means we don't actually have to cancel retool this one to to it well we'll retool this one this is one that we'll retool um, we don't actually need this one either. So we will tool to Bandicoot. And that will con still let us build um, our Sydney class freighters. So we'll retool to the Bandicoot. And once that's finished retooling in a couple of months, uh, we can start building our... Um, our... Um, trip transports. Right. Uh, in the meantime, let's get some assault infantry, and we'll get some heavy assault battalions. There we go. So that will give us a little bit more invasion power. Because when we've got garrison, and we've got a couple of construction brigades, um, we do have a few mobile infantry and a few garrisons. But we don't really have anything for with with decent offensive power, right? Um, while we're at it, we'll also. Um, Oh no, we do have combat strength uh, on the, on the to do list, so that's fine. Okay, so we'll keep going. All right, supply on of sorium on Quar has been exhausted, so that's just got a little bit of uranium left. Um, so that one will be ready to expunge shortly. Keep going. We will have to um, pull back our combat fleet shortly, though, because they're just gonna. They're not gonna see anything. <laughs> that's interesting. That's that's actually really, really interesting. If you, if you have a look, right. Um, so our fleet is sitting here, so it's detecting that five strength, uh, and these ground forces we know about, so they're over here as well. Um, and you can see that because of the five day tick, the planet's orbiting actually pretty quick. What's the orbit on those? Only a couple million kilometers, right? So that's orbiting bloody fast around the star. Um... Orbital distance, 33 million kilometers. That explains why its temperature is 243 degrees. Uh, it's got a 37-day year. Huh. Looks like it's, look, it's tidally locked, too. It's got a 37-day day and a 37-day year. Hmm. That's cool. So the, innermo the innermost three planets are actually tidally locked to their star. Which is awesome. And look at this guy. This guy's got a 18-hour day. Cairns A4 has an 18-hour day. That's that's pretty cool. Um, do we have any, well, look at this guy. 24-hour day. Dwarf planet. It's No, it's a 4-hour day. That's insane. That is insane. It's a four-hour day. You get a sunrise and a sunset every four hours. Not much of a sunrise or a sunset because it's 1.2 billion kilometers out. But still, that's insane. Uh, and then this guy's got a 1.14 year day. Once again, tidally locked. What's a tidally locked? Oh, it's a moon. Uh, so it's tidally locked to its planet, but it's got a really slow year. Um, yeah, that's um, that's very interesting. But yeah, you'll notice that these that the tails, right, are uh, because it's orbiting so quickly in five days, it's moving all the way around. But the tail is a straight line because the tail only only shows you uh, where it moved from and where it moved to. 
uh, and it draws a straight line. So even though it moved on this curve, it moved from here to here. Uh, and the ground force apparently moved from here to here. So it looks like there's some kind of a um, same orbit, but uh, probably could be a Lagrange point. That, look, that looks like a Lagrange point. It's not an actual Lagrange point because you can't jump through it. Uh, but that would be... That would be approximately where the Lagrange point is, I would think. <clears throat> so I think it's 33 degrees out. So we've got 27 and 76, so uh, uh, about 50 degrees. I don't know. Whatever. We'll keep going. <clears throat> yeah, so that's just a few little, few little interesting things, but not really uh, too important to us right now. Uh, but yeah, the task group, right? We, we really do need to send them home because their crew grade, their um, deployment time is slowly ticking away. And the maintenance clock is as well. It's a lot cheaper to maintain a fleet than it is to uh, overhaul it. So if you can keep them at home, um, it'll be cheaper. Refuel, resupply, um, load ordinance, overhaul. And away we go. It'll lose contact. There it goes. And keep going. This is Kansas is a very small system, isn't it? It's only, it's only like a one and a bit billion kilometers. Ah, oh, oh, right, of course. I forgot to grab the press bar. Which is our jump tender, so we can't actually... No, that is strange. Hang on. Okay, so it's trying to jump into Sol. But we have a jump tender already on Rockhampton. And the jump tender should be able to pull it back the other way. Yeah, it's there. Come back, come back around the other side. See if we'll come through. Oh, we're told to not. That is really strange. Okay, go eat press bar and then try and jump through. That's fine, we'll wait. What's going on? Something's into something was intercepting us or something. I don't know. Uh, Alex, what are you? What's up? What, where are you up to? Yeah, there's a thermal signature in cans. Well, we found the partially intact colony. Oh, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. We're definitely going to need that. Um, okay, so you've eaten Prespa. The can's A5. Yeah, we're going to be seeing them a lot.
Okay, so now it's able to come through. That's really strange. It seems like it can't actually tender properly. Um, I'll have to investigate that further. I'm going to do that on my own time, though, because I'd, it'll just take too long and it'll be just too much testing and uh, too much hassle. But, um, yeah, I'll do, I'll do that a little bit later. Um, yeah, really not sure about that one. But anyway, um, it won't really be required for much longer because we have a jump gates mo moving into this position. So, move to re resupply, and we don't overhaul it, so that can stay. Yeah, we've got a jump. We've got a jump gate constructor on the way now. How are we doing? Our tracking speed is getting there slowly, almost there. Um, Mark Harrison has almost finished refitting, and as is Grimsby 2, oh, Grimsby 2 ages ago, ages away. Retooling's slowly chugging along. Amex is going home, yes, good. Cans, how you doing? You know what, I'm just going to turn on their sensors as well. Active on. Active on. Okay, it looks like they have finished their geological survey. It's time to do a grav survey. There we go. Up you go. Let's have a quick check of this of of Camber of Cairns first. What do we get? So we got nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Uh, very nice geranium there. Lots of kind of useless neutronium. Little bit of corbamide. Lot, ooh, lots of very nice boronide quantity. Macassium is also really nice. Uh, iridium, coronium, and gallocyte are both in high quantities, but the accessibility is kind of garbage. So, oh well. Um, Tritanium, boronide, saurium... The loss of titanium is nice, but the accessibility is crap. Um, however, it is a low-cost colony, so we will be uh, 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 colonizing it. It's also got the partially intact colony, so there's definitely uh, going to be dropping troops there. Uh, we want this one, so we'll stick a colony there. Nothing, 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 nothing. Uh, no planetary survey. It's a dwarf planet. Ah, oh, one's probably already on, one's probably on the way, but hasn't actually completed yet. So we'll wait for that one. And nothing there. What do we get from can cans? Cans, cans, cans. Here we go. I think we need to reopen this. Okay, cans. Construction production ninety percent. Yes. Yes, definitely yes. These two are kind of are kind of meh, but this one, construction production with an almost 100% bonus, we are definitely colonizing cans and moving some construction, um, moving a few labs over there. That is for sure. Sydney Prime is almost ready for colonization as well. Just need to get the uh, safe greenhouse a little bit higher. Half a right, I use six days. Yeah, equalize it.
Oh yeah, that's a tiny system. Look at that. The entire system is contained within the first um, ring of survey locations. And we got shore leave, but that's to be expected. How are we doing on that shipyard? Getting there slowly. With the total tracking speeds um, increase, we can think about doing um, refits or redesigns of our point defense ships. But uh, we'll see what else we can get out of it. Okay, so Mark Aronson is ready to go. Good. We will refuel. And where are we going to send them? <clears throat> Let's send them via Parramatta. So we'll take go to Adelaide, Brisbane, Parramatta, and there. Our hall's complete. <clears throat> and now we're just maintaining. Okay, we have discovered Bendigo, and it looks like Bendigo has some planets, including a habitable one or two. We're finding a lot of nice planets around. How's Sydney doing? I think I think it's just hit zero. No. Oh, why is it inactive? Bloody hell. <clears throat> oh, better turn on the sensors as well. There we go. Alright, so this one's a heck of a lot bigger. Ooh, hello. Combat fleet, go! Uh, we will eat marathon and grab a quick refuel. And we will go Adelaide, Brisbane. Parramatta, Bendigo, move to. Do we want to bring anyone else along, though? Um, we don't have another carrier to bring the rest of this to Brooks. We do have a couple of Melbourne twos, which are our beam ships, but they haven't been refit yet. Um, what kind of range have they got? 
20 billion compared to 28 billion and they're not as fast as they could be I'm a little bit reluctant to bring them along I think I might bring just one or two yeah let's bring Mastiff and Pitbull Hopefully, they will actually be worthwhile. So, uh, next, Mark Aronson. Bail the hell out of there. Oh, we need that one. That's probably going to be Swarm. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be Swarm. So, yeah, it's going to be a good thing that we're going to bring our... Um... Yeah, Mark Aronson is gone. Yep. So it looks like we found the swarm. Yeah, our next generation of um, exploration ships is definitely going to have some weaponry. How are we doing on the AWACS front? Fully fueled and on the way. But uh, yeah, there is no way they're going to survive. They're going to be able to get there before the fuel pods um, expire. So. Okay, turret tracking speed is done. We are now starting on laser focal sizes yeah i think i'll wait for the focal size to be done and i'll probably do the advanced spinal as well um and then once the next tech of laser is done then i'll redesign the um cannon based combat ships both our point defense ship and our laser ship How far out are they? We're still six days out. Um, we're going to need a new enterprise. And construction. Okay. Uh, first, let's go have a look at Sydney Prime. Oh, almost. Now, let's get it up to a more ha more comfortable atmosphere. 0.28 is fine. And our combat fleet should be done. There we go. How are we doing? We are at a substantial amount of fuel. So let's refuel from our tankers.
And what's the range on this? A few thousand million kilometers. Yep, that is fine. So, through the jump point we go, but we will detach Marathon because there's no point bringing it along. And it's important to have a spare jump ship. So, actually, we'll dish Prespa as well. Actually, no, we should have... Oh, Marathon is only a standard one. That's why we couldn't jump through. Marathon couldn't tender the fleet because Marathon is just an Arunta class. It's not a 25k class. So Marathon would have been able to transfer them except for Shoalwater, which is a 25 kiloton uh, command carrier. Because of that, um, we were unable to transit using the Marathon and had to bring the Prespa along. So we're going to have to remember to, do, to refit the Marathon into a 25k class so that it can act as a jump tender for our full combat fleet. So there we go. You learned something new. Cool. <clears throat> All right. We are through. So now that we are through, we will take Shoalwater and split it off and we will take our combat fleet and who is slow missile boats are slow so we're going to take our missile boats and split them off okay 10,125 who's the slow one there So we got our point defense ships are not going to be useful. So Melbourne 2 can pull 11k. River 3 can pull 12k. Waramonga can pull 13k. Where's the slowdown? Waramonga. Oh, Warmonger 2 can pull 13k. Um, obviously, the Warmonger 1 can't. So, hopefully, he won't slow us down. If he does, we'll just have to ditch him. Um, no, we're going to have to split him off. Okay, break him off. Um, we'll, take, we'll bring these guys along. No, split them off completely into a new one. There we go. 10,945. Yeah, so here's a slow one. Uh, AWACS. Still so slow. Why is it slow? Melbourne 2 is 11,000. No, River 2. River 2 is a slow one. Massive and thought. Okay, there we go. So these guys are the ones that we're going to bring along, and we will bring. No, we won't bring Waramonga. All right, so we only have a few destroyers to work with, but these guys should. But these guys are faster than the fighters, so we should be able to uh, take them out. So. That, I'm going to take a break here, to, uh, give you all a bit of a cliffhanger again, and n tomorrow we will continue on and take out some swarm. Thank you for watching, see you next time.